Good day everyone. In this video I'm just going to show you how to make a light plate. So a light plate is basically a piece of perspex that you sandwich between the back plate and the top of the pedal. Um, this one just goes on and off with this um, red glow like that. And this one is a delay that will flash with the delay. Um, basically you can sort of see it'll sort of flash a bit with the delay signal of your um, guitar. You can see more uh, in-depth information on how to build both of those on my um, channel. Just check out the Zombie Fuzz and the Sea Urchin, um, uh, the Fleet Beacon as well. And I actually explain how to wire up these um, LEDs to flash with the, um, with, the, with the output signal. You can do this for any guitar pedal, uh, any modulation. Um, you can even do it with a distortion pedal and it will flash with, when you play your guitar, it will flash with the guitar, with the guitar signal. So I'll just go out to the garage now and I'll show you how to um, how to make one. So firstly, just before I begin with what we need to do, um, just a quick explanation. Basically, it's tempting just to cut the piece of perspex the size as close to the size that you need and then drill out the holes so that you don't have to do as much sanding around the outside when you put it between the, um, the back plate and the top. But the danger of doing that is that you can you can break the corner. This is one that I've broken um, in the past and you can see that I didn't leave much area on the end there. So I've drilled in and it's just gone snap. This stuff's pretty brittle. So the way that I do it now is, um, this is probably a bit big. It's quite a large piece, but this is actually all I have left over. You could probably go a bit smaller than that. You, I, I might actually get the hacksaw onto it and cut it down to size. Um, but I would leave kind of a, you know, like a decent amount around the edge because um, the drill bits that you're supposed to use for Perspex, one of the types that you can use for Perspex, is this uh, a Forstner bit. Um, I don't have any small size Forstner bits, so I have to use regular drill bits. And the problem with that is that the regular drill bit kind of bites into the Perspex. And as it's, as it's going through, um, you can see that it's just kind of gone through and just um, snapped it off. So they're rough on Perspex and um, uh, that's why you need to leave an extra area. If you've got the right drill bit, you, could, you might be able to do this and it'll save you some time sanding it. Um, if you're gonna use just regular um, high speed drill bits, uh, you're going to have to leave extra around just for a bit of um, reinforcement when you, when you drill the holes out. So the first thing you wanna do is cut your Perspex to size and drill the holes. So we'll do that first. Oh yeah, just one other thing I forgot to mention too, depending on which type you go for, whether you go for the um, enclosed back or the clear back, um, if you go for the clear back, you don't have to worry about the back plate, you just chuck it, because you're not going to be using it. If you are going to be using the back plate, you've got to sand off this ridge around the outside. It's a bit of work, um, I'd, I'd recommend using an electric sander, obviously, you'll be sanding that off with sandpaper for the four hours so yeah use an electric sander, a belt sander would probably rip through it pretty fast I've just got a um, uh, you know the vibrating type, the, um, I can't remember what they're called but uh, that gets through it, it's still a bit of work but um, yeah definitely you're definitely going to want to use an electric sander to get through that now this is my last piece of perspex so I'm going to be uh, pretty careful and I've left quite a bit on the outside um, uh, which I, you can actually hacksaw off later on once you've done the drill bits but uh, the drill holes, but um, yeah, I'm just gonna cut that with a hacksaw. Um, ha hacksaw is not the correct tool to use on Perspex if it's your final edge, because it'll be rough as, but we need to sand it back again, so it, it doesn't make any difference for us. So I'll hacksaw that off. So that's the cut. Also make sure you put on a, um, a mask for because um, it get, has a bit of a smell. You're supposed to wear a mask when you work with Perspex. And um, uh, leave this backing tape on this brown stuff um, until the end as well because um, it'll just prevent scratches and things on the actual Perspex. So next we're going to drill the, the Perspex. As I said before, you, you drill it at this stage while it's got this extra around the outside so you don't actually um, accidentally snap the edge. Um, and I just use a, a nail and just sort of uh, just scratch it a little bit in the holes. Um, you could probably tape that down or clamp it just so it doesn't um, move around. 
Um, and my other tip too is when you're um, when you're doing this, I highly recommend not using a pre-painted enclosure. Um, the reason is that you've got to sand this back when it's actually sandwiched between the top and the bottom plate. And you can see there's a little mark up there. Um, I did a pretty good job on this, I've got to say. I taped all the outside and it was, it was, a, it was a headache. It's so much easier if you use a unpainted enclosure and then paint the enclosure later. Um, so yeah, there's a little tip for you. It'll save you, it'll save you a, long, a lot of um, um, time and effort. I mean, because the, the, the tape was coming off when I was sanding it and, and I had to retape it and it just took forever. So yeah, use a bare enclosure, it's much easier. So because we're not using the correct um, drill bits, you need to go with the small with a small drill bit and work your way up to the larger size because um, you will if you just go in with a large uh, a large drill bit, it's going to bite into the plexiglass and then it will just shatter it. So um, start with a smaller one and just work your way up to the um, size that you need for the um, for the screw to fit through. Just keep checking it with the screw to make sure it fits. And you also want to use the slowest drill speed that your um, that your drill press can do because um, uh, plexiglass will melt if you uh, if it generates it generates a lot of heat when you drill through. Um, it's probably not so important when you're using small drill bit sizes like these, but um, better to be safe than sorry. Just lower the speed on your um, yeah your drill press to the lowest the lowest speed. This cloth was just getting in the way, so I've just torn off a little bit just to protect it where the clamp is. Um, just make sure when you clamp it too, you don't over clamp it. This stuff shatters, so you've just got to be careful when you're handling it. So for my um, enclosure, the um, screw hole size is 4mm. My enclosure isn't a standard one, it's a J-car though. Um, if, it might not be quite the same. They might be a bit smaller than um, like the Mammoth or... Um, or Tadar enclosures, so you just have to check that. But for this one, it was um, four mil, so you'd be aiming around four mil probably. So the four holes are drilled. Um, if we can just stress again, just drill through slowly, and um, also don't be tempted just to go for the um, maximum drill bit straight off. Use a few different drill bits, and um, until you get to the to the one that you need, because um, you'll you'll snap it. It's very fragile sort of stuff, or or, or it'll chip or whatever. So. Yeah, just go up in the drill step sizes um, one at a time. So next I'm just going to mark around the outside um, where the, put the back plate on it and just use a pencil and go around and mark the outside and I'm going to hacksaw off the, um, the edges. So that's the board with the um, excess cut off. A little bit close there. I probably would, should have kept about this much on the sides just to be sure. Um, just for when you do it, just so you know what to aim for. And um, if you're doing the clear back type at this point, um, you could countersink those holes actually um, uh, before you hack off the edges. Um, just countersink them in so you can hide the screw, the screws a bit. They still stick up slightly, but if you don't do that, they'll be sticking up quite a bit. So um, yeah, you just got to countersink it a bit so that they can um, be hidden in that way. And then if you're going for the clear back type again, um, you, I, I can't remember the process exactly of what I did with that one, but I think um, you could probably just screw that on top and then get your um, sander out and sand off the excess on the edge. I'm not going to actually do that in this video. I'm going to do the whole shebang and put the, um, the back plate on the back of it as well. So... Uh, next I'll have to do is get rid of this ridge which is a bit of work but um, yeah with an electric sander it's a bit easier so just a tip um, when you're sanding actually you can see I've finished this side and that's flat um, this side's still got a bit of a ridge on it so um, you'll know when you're done because it'll, it'll have that flat silver look. Just try and keep the sander flat. Um, don't, don't sand off a corner, a corner, this bit, that bit. Just do the whole thing in one shot and you'll get it nice and flat. If you don't, you kind of have bits taken out on the edge and it's not as, it's not as, it's not as neat. 
that's a pro tip. Took me three goes to work that out. So yeah, just go flat across the top and then I, I just put it in this thing, go flat across the top, then spin it around and go flat on the other side and just take it off a um, bit at a time and get it nice and flat. So that's with the lip sanded off. Uh, actually turned out pretty good if I don't mind saying so myself. And I also found that the holes need to be opened up a bit to four and a half mil. Four mil was was cutting it a bit fine, so um, with four and a half mil, um, yeah, it worked out pretty good though. So now um, I'm going to sand off the excess fiber um, plexiglass as it is now, like this. I'm just going to put that in the vise and just sh and just shave off um, uh, around the outside of it. So that's the finished light plate. It's nice and smooth around the outside. Sometimes you get a bit of a lip, but I've sanded that down really well and I'm quite happy with it. So now you just gotta drill the holes into the plexiglass um, for the LEDs. I talk about that more in the zombie build report and the fleet beacon build report if you want more information about the actual LED side side of it and the wiring. Um, where, But as far as the um, light plate tutorial goes, that's pretty much it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.